about uh, socialist medicine versus uh, capitalist medicine. Um, I'm kind of drunk, kind of dizzy, so sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> Take that out of the record. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so studying uh, the study of health uh, in economics uh, started with uh, Arrows, Ken Arrows, uh, seminal article in 1963, which uh, most of you were, uh, I remember, in my uh, Arrows Impossible Theorem um, presentation. So the same guy, he's everywhere. Uh, is considered to be a socialist, but probably we would call him uh, rather a freshwater socialist. So in his article, uh, I mean health in economics, healthcare and medicine in economics, uh, was studied of course before 1960s, but uh, the difference was um, healthcare was just like food, clothing, or anything else, like any other good it was uh, produced, it had a supply, it had a demand, um, bought and sold in the market. So the study, in theory, in economics, was uh, just like uh, the other goods. However, Arrow, in his article, came up uh, with his critique um, that healthcare inherently is different than the other goods. So you cannot study healthcare as a good uh, bought and sold in the market uh, with supply and demand, so on and so forth, uh, just like the others. One reason is it is uncertain, there is uncertainty, uh, which means you don't know whether any operation will be successful, uh, certainly or not. Um, but still you pay for it, regardless the operation or the drugs you use uh, will have any effect on your health or not, you pay for it. Um, so it's uncertain, it's probabilistic uh, in that sense. Second, there's an information asymmetry, which means one side, the seller, uh, the provider of the service, which the doctors, hospitals, know uh, the good, the service, better than you do. So, I mean, I fractured my ankle last semester. Um, I went to the uh, orthopedist, and then the first guy said that it's just a fracture, you don't even need a hard cast. I was like, all right, that's good. Um, then the second one said that, oh, you need a hard cast. Then in order to get the hard cast, they uh, sent me to a specialist. I went to him, he looked at the x-rays, he said, you need an operation. <laughs> um, so I ended up getting the operation. It was uh, kind of expensive. <laughs> uh, but the trick is, Whatever they say, you take it. I mean, uh, yeah. you don't know what's going on. They know everything. Maybe the operation wasn't necessary. Uh, so it was kind of supplier-induced uh, in that sense. Uh, so these two uncertainty and asymmetric information in any good creates inefficiencies in the market. The, uh, the strongest point of free markets is that uh, if markets are free, then the economy is efficient. Peer says if there is uncertainty and or asymmetric information, then the free markets would not be efficient. Um, so if Arrow is right, which he is, uh, if healthcare is uncertain as a good and if there is asymmetric information, then if you freely, in the market, if you freely provide uh, healthcare, then the healthcare markets will not be efficient. So that was his point, uh, basically, and it was a critique in that sense, uh, but it was not really a critique to me and to most of the uh, radical people because still the language was the same. It was within the mainstream. Um, health was considered to be a commodity, so Arrow uh, did not have any problem with health uh, being sold and bought in the market uh, with a price. If the markets if health was not uncertain, and if there wasn't any asymmetric information, then free markets was going to be efficient, and Arrow uh, was not going to have any problem with that. Um, 
So as long as you eliminate imperfections, like uncertainty and uh, asymmetric information, then uh, markets will be efficient, and then uh, you can sell health uh, as a commodity. In order to solve this, Arrow's point was uh, non-market institutions like uh, government programs, uh, health maintenance or management uh, organizations, insurance insurance companies eliminate uh, the uncertainty for you. Uh, such things help the, to eliminate the uh, uncertain and uh, asymmetric uh, nature of healthcare. Of course, there is uh, very strong evidence uh, for uh, the success of national health systems. Um, so, better infant mortality, life expectancy rates, calorie intake, and all other uh, all other um, health indicators uh, are usually uh, better in countries like Britain, Nordic countries, China, USSR, Kerala, uh, a province in uh, India, uh, autonomous socialist. Uh, Cuba, all these countries do better comparatively uh, in those health indicators uh, with respect to uh, not or private, privately uh, provided uh, healthcare. Uh, Navarro has shown that, I mean, there are a bunch of other uh, papers showing that uh, there is a high correlation between uh, socioeconomic factors, socioeconomic uh, variables, and health outcomes like lower unemployment lower income inequality, uh, equal distribution of education and uh, health resources imply better health. Uh, I mean, the causation might be, might not be that clear, but at least they are uh, highly uh, correlated. So that this implies, uh, I mean, what, what is socioeconomic status? It's uh, your income, uh, education, and profession, basically, a combination of uh, those. So the better, uh, the higher your income, the higher your uh, um, education, the higher uh, your health uh, status. And what I'm going to argue is uh, med medicine and health, uh, they are not neutral. I mean, medicine is, a, is science, and hard sciences are hard sciences. It doesn't matter whether you are in under socialism or capitalism or slavery, if there is gravity, then there will be gravity uh, even under uh, slavery, right? Uh, but my argument is that medicine uh, is not necessarily a hard science like that. There are uh, gray areas which uh, there is uh, ideology, and it is specific to the mode of production. The understanding and application of medicine is different under slavery, under feudalism, under capitalism, and under uh, socialism. So uh, that's a distinct uh, difference. Um, and I'm gonna use a historical materialist uh, perspective um, through the works of Engels, Virchow, Salvador, Allende, um, and more recently, Navarro and Weiskin, and try to conceptualize uh, what we understand by socialist medicine, what does it mean uh, medicine and healthcare to be specific to a mode of production, and how we get there. So before, uh, we should understand what we mean by orthodox uh, mainstream uh, medicine and healthcare. Uh, first, medicine is scientific um, and, and employs positivist uh, approaches. Uh, health, diseases, illnesses, sicknesses, everything uh, are uh, biological phenomena happens, uh, it takes place within your uh, body. Um, and the method they use is uh, methodological individualism, which is uh, you want to you wanna study the society in general, but it is difficult to do so because there are like 300 million people in US or billions of people in the world. So you cannot uh, study the world or the societies uh, broadly. What you do is you take one individual as a representative one, study that individual, and societies at the end of the day consist of the sum of uh, individuals. Uh, so studying the individual, by studying the individual, you can study uh, society as well. 
Then the uh, unit of analysis becomes uh, the individual, the human body, uh, the organs, and at the extreme, uh, the cells, uh, the individual cells. Um, and in this orthodox uh, understanding of medicine, uh, healthcare and medicine is not social, it is mechanistic. What I mean by that is uh, consider an engineer fixing a machine. And the relation between the engineer and the machine is mechanistic. Uh, machine is broken, engineer is specialist, comes and fixes it. In medicine, patient is the machine, which is broken, and doctor is the engineer, and the relationship is mechanistic. You are not taking care of a uh, person. You are just fixing a machine. And I mean, uh, my doctor friends, they were literally uh, saying that the professors, their professors, were uh, literally teaching that don't think the patient is a human. Like, literally, don't think that uh, there is a human in front of you. It is a machine. You shouldn't have any connection, any social relation whatsoever with that person. So in that sense, medicine, orthodox medicine, is not social. Uh, so this implies that uh, there is no space for social factors. Uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, the sick person is your wife, daughter, or anyone. Um, it's just a sick person which you don't know, um, just like uh, a machine, who doesn't have any personality. Um, this is called kind of uh, flexnerian after Robert or Richard Lexner, uh, who came with the report, uh, kind of pointing the uh, main themes of uh, mainstream uh, medicine. So, under orthodox medicine, understanding of medicine, uh, the factors, the, the causes are uh, single. So, if you break your arm, the cause is that uh, you must have applied too much force that you, your bones. Uh, cannot bear. Uh, that's the cause. Um, or if you have black lungs, then it must be because of coal dust. So single uh, causation. If it is tuberculosis, uh, it's the cause is cough bacillus. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I mean, if you have broken your arm while working in construction yard, and it's because of lack of safety measures, that's not the cause under this. Uh, the cause is you have applied too much force, uh, which you shouldn't have. Uh, the doctors don't really care about social uh, determinants. Uh, so under capitalism, uh, health uh, is two things. First, a consumption good. Um, health is good because the healthier you are, uh, the happier you are. So you would like to be healthier. Uh, and this makes health uh, subject to neoclassical uh, economic uh, theories, which means that if it is a good to be bought and sold in the market, then it is part of your consumption bundle. It is part of your shopping cart. And when you go to Smith's, you look around and decide whatever to buy. Um, and health is one of them. So you decide however much health you want to <coughs> buy. And then, uh, it's a decision. It's your decision. So if you are healthy, it's because it's because you decide to be healthy. Or if you are unhealthy, mm -hmm. it means that uh, it is your decision again. So remember, uh, if you have seen uh, Michael Moore's Seiko, mm -hmm. in the first scene, the guy was losing uh, his uh, two fingers, yeah. and they were taking the fingers, going to hospital. Uh, hospital says that you know this finger is cut like uh, okay so it's gonna be easier to stitch so it costs twenty two thousand dollars second is worse so it's gonna cost thirty eight thousand uh, dollars so sixty thousand dollars in total um, do you have insurance the guy says I have but doesn't cover this of course insurance never covers those type of things <laughs> um, then how much money do you have he says I have like 20,000 all my life savings. Uh, then they stitch one, but not the other. They ask uh, him which one he wants. 
Yeah. <laughs> and that, that under this theory is a decision. The guy has decided, preferred to not to stitch. I mean, he could have, uh, if he had worked harder and bought insurance before, <laughs> again, it is a decision. You can decide to work hard or be lazy and unemployed, right? Uh, within this uh, framework. Yeah. So it's like uh, a chain reaction. Uh, as a chain reaction, uh, this becomes your decision. Like, uh, or if your uh, arm is broken, if you don't have the money, you can prefer, you can decide to uh, have a broken arm or something. Um, education is similarly. Uh, if you are not educated, then it's your decision. Uh, it's not that you don't have the money or something. Um, anyhow, so it's also dynamic because uh, your health today affects your health uh, in 20 years. The, the better you take care of your, yourself today, uh, the healthier you will be um, in the future. So it's kind of different than just an iPhone or Apple uh, like, or a chocolate bar. You, I mean, of course, they also have uh, some dynamic effects, but not uh, as much. I mean, in health, it is uh, more clear, or in education, uh, it's more clear. Um, second, it's an investment good. Because it's part of your uh, human capital. Uh, if you are sick, if you are cancer, if you are ill, or if you cannot see, if you cannot walk, uh, then you cannot do certain jobs. Uh, so uh, you cannot get higher returns uh, in money terms uh, if you are uh, not uh, healthy. Uh, so it's you invest uh, yourself. And investment, again, is a decision. Um, so if you want higher returns in the future, then you should invest more in education, in your health today. Uh, and if you are 50 years old and if you are not in good shape, it must be because that 30 years ago you didn't invest, you didn't choose to invest in yourself uh, that way. So a critique would be, uh, I mean first, Capitalism is a class society. Uh, at the highest level of abstraction, there are two classes, uh, bourgeoisie and proletariat. Um, the way Marx uses in uh, his major work, capital. The bourgeoisie owns uh, the and controls the means of productions. Um, the proletariat just uh, owns uh, their labor power and sells the labor power to the bourgeoisie production uh, takes place, uh, so on and so forth. Um, the crucial story in Marx, actually, probably Marx's main theme in Capital and in, his, in most of his work, is to show that there's a conflict between Capital and Labor, between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. That was Marx's main theme. Um, and further, there is an exploitation. Capital exploits labor. Bourgeoisie exploits uh, proletariat, uh, in other words. That was the thing Marx wanted to show scientifically, basically. Um, of course, exploitation, exploitation uh, took place in all of the modes of productions uh, before. And they were pretty transparent. I mean, under slavery, there are masters and slaves, masters literally own the slaves. They buy them, they whip them, they can do, they can kill them, they can do whatever they want. This is exploitation and this is so transparent. I mean, you can, when you look at the master-slave relationship, you can see the exploitation there and it is so apparent and so obvious. It's not that obvious under feudalism, but still, uh, but in capitalism, uh, that exploitation is difficult to show because um, at the end of the day, I sell my labor and I'm willing to do so. I mean, I don't have to sell my labor. Uh, uh, but um, so it's a contractual uh, relationship. I, I choose to, I sign a contract. Uh, so nobody is exploiting, exploiting anybody actually. Um, <laughs> and I am getting what I deserve. This is the crucial uh, statement of mainstream theory. Uh, 
everybody gets what they deserve, everybody deserves what they get. Um, so if this is the case, then who is exploiting whom? I mean, uh, if everybody is getting what they deserve and everybody is deserving what they get, then nobody is exploited. Uh, so if I put this much effort in my work and in return I get more than I deserve, then the theory says other people in the society will enter this market. They will say, you know what, these guys work this much, but in return they get this much. So as they enter the market, this gap will, uh, as supply and demand work, so that uh, the effort and what they get will be the same. If your effort is above what you uh, get, then you will leave that uh, work because you, you're gonna feel exploited because you are putting this much effort, but in return you get this many dollars. So you're gonna leave the market and the gap will uh, uh, go away so that uh, there won't be any exploitation. Um, so it was a difficult task for Marx to show that there really uh, is a uh, exploitation. Of course, in order to uh, legitimize this system, legitimize exploitation, ideology uh, plays a crucial role. All the superstructure, uh, religion, education, um, medicine, science, law, everything in the superstructure uh, are controlled by the bourgeoisie. Uh, in order to legitimize these uh, power uh, dynamics, medicine is part of a uh, is part of the uh, superstructure, and is an uh, one of the other uh, apparatuses of uh, to control society. Um, science in general and medicine in specific uh, is necessarily esoteric. I mean, you can, most people cannot even read the uh, titles of some drugs and pills. Um, let alone the uh, Latin names of uh, bones or organs uh, and stuff. So the creation of medical knowledge is controlled by the bourgeoisie, since medicine is controlled by the bourgeoisie. Uh, universities, research institutions, uh, journals and stuff uh, are the places uh, which the medical uh, knowledge is created. Uh, although doctors are not capitalists, I mean, at the end of the day, they are workers. They don't own uh, a means of production. But even in Russia, even, even in Soviet Russia, doctors were the ones uh, who earned significantly higher than the others. Uh, I mean, in private, in advanced uh, capitalist countries, some specialists earn more than a uh, million dollars. So um, even though they are not bourgeoisie in that sense, even though they don't own a means of production, they're in a good shape. So they would be uh, reluctant uh, to initiate a revolution. And even in Soviet Russia, when the, uh, when the Red October took place, doctors, basically, medical professionals, were the first to stand against the, uh, the revolution. Um, so they ally with the, uh, with the bourgeoisie. <coughs> I mean, idealism is marginal. I want to say that, uh, like, when it comes to health or education, teachers or doctors uh, con are considered to be more idealist people. They care for the good of the society, not for the money. But it is, it is a very rare thing. Uh, yes, among millions of doctors, there are one, two, three, four, five, eight, whatever uh, people uh, who wouldn't care about the money, really. Uh, but for the good of the people, uh, which I, even in Utah, there's a free um, medical uh, clinic or something, yeah. Uh, you, you don't pay anything, they don't make money. I mean, there are uh, those type of people, but it's not very common. Uh, so what matters is not the ideas, like the goodwill, but material conditions. If you are making millions of dollars, you will be uh, against the revolution, against uh, any change. We are going to lose that uh, that material condition. Um, the thing is, medical knowledge is created ideologically. Um, definitions, causes, and interventions are framed uh, according to the bourgeois ideology. Uh, what I mean is, 
So illness, what is, how do you define sickness? How do you define a disease? How do you define uh, illness? Uh, under orthodox medicine, it is defined over the ability to work. For instance, if you break your arm and you cannot operate uh, a machine or something, then you can take a leave of absence for sure, because you are not able to work. The boss will not be able to, the capitalist won't be able to uh, create surplus value from your labor. Um, so if you go to uh, your uh, supervisor, show your broken arm, then he can give you a leave of absence and say that when you are done, come back and continue working. Uh, but if you are like overwhelmed, depressed, like broken up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, on the verge of suicide, um, <laughs> like taking pills and stuff, so you are not uh, very feeling very good, but still you can push a button, you are able to work, uh, yeah, it's not that easy to take a leave of absence for those type of reasons. Uh, so it's just physically uh, being able to work and not uh, uh, defines the uh, being healthy or unhealthy under capitalism. Um, so in that sense, it's not an end, but it's a means to <coughs> produce the surplus value. Uh, under capitalism, health is provided so that the working people are healthy enough to produce surplus value for the capitalists. Uh, it's not for sake of the people being healthy. It's for the sake of uh, capitalists uh, making more money. Uh, I mean, same thing for education. Uh, but anyhow. So, also under capitalism, uh, in medicine, hierarchical the systemic uh, systemic aspects of uh, capitalism, like hierarchical and discriminatory aspects, are mirrored in medicine as well. Uh, bourgeois medicine is necessarily racist, sexist, and elitist. Uh, most of the elite professionals, specialists, are uh, white and male, um, just like the rest of the society. So it's mirrored in medicine uh, clearly. Nurses are always, I mean, not always, but most of the time, female. Uh, it's a mirror image of uh, like the role of women in the society, caring and rearing. Uh, um, medical schools are the most expensive ones. So if you are a minority, if you are unemployed, if you are uh, working class, if you are a peasant, you won't be able to afford um, like five hundred thousand uh, dollars for a uh, medical school. So that uh, those people like. The ones who are already at the bottom of the society won't be able to switch to the top by studying uh, medicine. The ones who can go to medical schools are the children of uh, the bourgeois. So that the bourgeois people reproduce their bourgeois status and the working class, the low class people, will be reproducing uh, their low class, working class uh, status over and over again. Um, it's set up that way. So Friedrich Engels was one of the first uh, people studying uh, the socioeconomic factors of health, healthcare, and medicine. Actually, his first uh, long book was titled was "On the Working Conditions uh, of uh, Workers in England" or something. Uh, so that was his first book. Uh, so he pointed out that uh, long working hours lack of safety measures uh, increases the injuries in working place. Back then, there were no uh, working hour limits. So the capitalist was kind of uh, coming and saying that from now on, you're going to work 14 hours. I mean, there's no law, no nothing. Uh, two months later, he comes and says, from now on, you're going to work 18 hours. If you don't like, then you can go. I'm going to pay the same. So, I mean, Workers were literally sleeping in the factories um, because you work 18 hours, sleep six hours, and you continue working. So it's a vicious uh, cycle. And of course, the longer you work, uh, and the more uh, the lack of safety measures, then you lose concentration, you're tired, and then you lose your finger. 
you break your arm, uh, whatever. Uh, so injuries uh, happen because of uh, long working hours uh, and lack of safety measures. Uh, again, lack of sa health standards, there, there is no uh, order uh, or standard uh, in that sense. So if the capitalist finds uh, one type of paint cheaper than the others, uh, which has toxic uh, ingredients, uh, he doesn't care. I mean, he would just give you the fabric, paint, whatever, uh, which is toxic. Um, since it is cheaper, you use touch uh, those type of things, and you get sickness, cancer, illness, uh, etc. Um, rapid urbanization and overcrowding. Uh, I mean, in the industrial revolution, which took, I mean, we call it a revolution, but it's not a daily thing. Uh, it took like hundred years. Uh, for the industrialization to uh, take place. Uh, but in the first years, there was a rush to the cities from the rural areas, um, but there wasn't enough uh, housing, and it, it takes time, especially back then, to build uh, new and uh, new houses. Uh, so at some point, there were more people than the houses, so we call it overcrowding, and this uh, overcrowding, poor waste disposal facilities, lack of ventilation, you don't have the uh, proper uh, infrastructure uh, at the time. Uh, all these cause tuberculosis, typhus, and their rapid uh, spread uh, among the people. Uh, and again, if you go to the doctor, if you have tuberculosis, the cause is Koch bacillus. Uh, but the actual causes, all this rapid urbanization, inadequate housing, so on and so forth. So you don't, they don't see uh, the social factors uh, causing the uh, sicknesses or illnesses. Again, uh, there weren't any minimum wage laws. Capitalist was basically uh, however uh, he or she likes. Uh, from now on, you're gonna work for uh, one pound a day. The other day, it's gonna be 0.7 pounds if you don't like or whatever, if all the capitalists uh, in that uh, local neighborhood do the same thing, where are you gonna go? So uh, wages were uh, depressed. As a result of low wages, there is malnutrition and rickets, scrofula, those type of diseases are caused by malnutrition. Um, so virtual following uh, German, uh, German physician, following uh, Engels' work, uh, basically are good similar uh, things that uh, illnesses, diseases, sicknesses are not only biological, yes I mean of course at the end of the day uh, a virus causes something so it's biological but there are social factors as well. Uh, he figured that he uh, named some diseases as crowd diseases like typhus, tuberculosis, leprosy which you don't see them uh, in the uh, rural areas. Uh, Often, uh, or artificial uh, modern uh, society diseases like mental disorders, uh, relapsing fever. Um, so you, you shouldn't be reducing, one shouldn't be reducing uh, the cause of the diseases to biological factors only. Um, because social factors, most of the case, uh, either aggravate or initiate or spread the disease as well. Um, and I mean, you don't need to be, uh, I mean, this is the easiest contradiction one can see in uh, private provision of healthcare or education or anything. Uh, the more sick people there are, the higher the profits. So this is a contradiction. I mean, mm -hmm. systems are uh, usually for the good <coughs> of the people, right? Um, but in this case, the good of the people contradict with uh, the interest of the capitalists. So uh, you wouldn't like to see that uh, all the people uh, happy and healthy. Then you won't be having customers in the hospitals. So in Cuba, what they do is they uh, prevent everything before they become, I mean, US is the uh, number one country which spends the highest uh, percentage of their its GDP on health. 20% of the GDP, so one dollar out of every five dollars uh, is, is going to healthcare. What does this mean? 
Does this mean that you are healthy or the opposite? It means that you are unhealthy in order to fix that you are spending 20% of your uh, GDP. Um, which is good for these CEOs of hospitals, of course. Uh, but the thing is uh, not to fix when it happens, but to prevent it. Um, instead of uh, like eating junk foods or smoking or drinking whatever, uh, in Cuba you prevent those type of things with like better nutrition, uh, healthy, natural uh, nutrition, uh, so that less people in 20 years become cancer. Less people become um, uh, lung cancer and stuff because of uh, cigarettes. I mean, yeah, cigarettes or smoking is kind of cultural, traditional thing in Cuba, but still, uh, they live uh, longer than uh, US. Uh, but in US, it's the opposite. Uh, or in advanced capitalist countries, you would like the people uh, to eat more junk food, smoke and stuff so that in 20 years they will be your uh, customers uh, and Salvador Allende uh, Chilean uh, revolutionary socialist uh, leader uh, he was originally a physician as well and before the before his term uh, he was the uh, Minister of Health um, so following Virchow's and Engels works uh, he emphasized, emphasized uh, on the uh, socioeconomic and political uh, factors uh, determining illness, uh, health, and healthcare. Um, he figured that cost safety measures are costly for the capitalists, and if they can avoid it, they do avoid it uh, without any hesitation. So, uh, if you uh, if you don't have enough uh, safety in the working place, then you get uh, injuries, uh, sickness, illness, disease, with uh, whatsoever. Uh, similar things, same things, malnutrition implies high infant mortality. Uh, his original contribution was, uh, he figured in Chile, uh, in inadequate clothing uh, among the working people uh, caused uh, upper respiratory uh, infections, tuberculosis, uh, and stuff. So that's another way. I mean, if you don't have the money to buy uh, adequate clothing, then you end up with uh, upper respiratory infections. Uh, but if you go to a doctor, it's not because of inadequate clothing, it's because of some virus or whatever. That's the uh, causation. Um, alcoholism uh, is necessarily common among the workers to seize the pain, basically, uh, of your uh, lousy life. Uh, I mean, we, we just saw uh, of my Sandman uh, in Steinbeck's uh, novel, you can like very clearly see that um, so in order to be a part of a community, you should obey the rules or the uh, norms of that uh, community. So, being a worker means that you work for the day, get your pay, go drink, try to enjoy or be depressed, whatever. Uh, and in that novel, um, George and Lenny. They were, they had their dreams. They were going to buy a house uh, with a big garden. They were going to have rabbits so that he can pet them. Uh, instead of saving, instead of spending their money on alcohol and drink, they were saving the money. And the uh, unfortunate uh, event happened when all the workers in the farm uh, got their uh, wages, went to a bar to drink. Uh, but they didn't because they were the outcast. Uh, if you don't uh, conform uh, with them, then you are the outcast. And in the uh, novel, he, he killed the uh, girl at that point. So uh, if you want to be a part of a community, uh, then you should be, and if you're a worker, then you should be alcoholic, basically, uh, to seize your pain, to conform uh, with the other workers. <coughs> and this causes cirrhosis uh, and sexual uh, dysfunctions, which are more common uh, among the lower class uh, people than the bourgeoisie. Uh, so in that sense, mode of production matters. Bourgeoisie causes disease ideology. Uh, bourgeois ideology causes disease. Capitalism necessarily uh, causes disease. Um, but if we take all these as given, like capitalist medi medicine, uh, capitalism as the mode of production, a given, which is, which was there, which is there, which will be there, so it's not going to change if you take that as given, and bourgeois medicine, then only way 
uh, is uh, to come up with reformist demands, which is uh, if you cannot change the system, you want to reform uh, some things, which is a more equal distribution of uh, healthcare or education or e employment opportunities, so on and so forth. Uh, so two big misconceptions about socialist medicine. Um, one is socialist medicine is more equally distributed medicine, like Obamacare, right? Obamacare is gonna distribute the healthcare more equally, so it is socialist. Obama is socialist. Uh, we are being socialist or something. Um, second is public sector health is socialist, and private healthcare is capitalist. Um, so two things. Uh, one. A, a more <coughs> equal distribution of medicine uh, is not socialist because uh, the meaning, the relations are still the same. It is a more equal distribution of bourgeois medicine, basically. Uh, still the system reproduces itself, still the bourgeois becomes the uh, uh, doctors and professionals, still the workers become the patients and stuff, uh, still uh, illness, sickness uh, are defined on the ability to work, it is ideological, so you distribute the same bourgeois ideology, the same bourgeois healthcare equally, it's just about that. Um, like, if there is free free education to everyone, is it socialist education? No, you are still teaching the same bullshit, the same telling, the same stories, the same lies, uh, the same idea, you are uh, indoctrinating people, students, with the same bourgeois ideology, you're just doing it equally distributed. So this is not socialist education. This is not uh, socialist uh, medicine. This is just equal distribution of uh, bourgeois medicine, bourgeois education. And one can criticize USSR in that respect. In USSR, yes, healthcare and medicine was equally, close to perfect, uh, equally distributed. But it wasn't socialist medicine. Socialist medicine wasn't rewritten. All the knowledge was bourgeois, capitalist, uh, still uh, a mechanistic view, a scientific and positivist view, uh, or employment. Yes, there was zero unemployment in Russia, Soviet Russia, true, which means that equal distribution of employment opportunities. Is this socialism? No. I mean, the meaning of work was still the same. Still, it was for this uh, production. Still, it was mass production. In the factories, uh, you work on an assembly, assembly line. Of course, there are reasons for that. Uh, it was in a, Russia was in a war, in a uh, race and cold war with uh, US, so you had to uh, catch up, uh, so on and so forth. But still, the meaning of work, uh, the alienation was still there. Uh, so this is not like equal distribution of something doesn't mean, uh, mean that it is socialist. In that respect, uh, socialist medicine will be specific to the socialist formation of the society. It's going to be determined by the class struggle and controlled by the workers. Um, so socialist medicine is democratic medicine. In Soviet Russia, even in so Soviet Russia, uh, the creation of the uh, medical knowledge was done by the doctors and the professionals. And it was still the same uh, esoteric uh, set of uh, theories, uh, so it wasn't democratic. Democracy means that uh, a mass involvement of uh, workers, um, of before, before the better distribution, you should rewrite, redefine the uh, medicine and healthcare. Um, and in Gramsci terms, uh, scientific explanation of reality, in medicine case, uh, scientific explanation of health, illness, and diseases should be done by the workers, with the workers, and for the workers. Um, it should be learning from the experiences of the workers uh, through surveys, opinion polls, which was done in USSR. Um, there should be a working workers uh, council so that you, uh, you uh, work, the doctors work with the workers to change the working conditions because I mean like you break your arm you go to the doctor if he or she fixes it 
And then what happens? You go back to the same illness generating, sickness generating working condition. So nothing changes. I mean, it was a, it was my kind of childhood trauma. Uh, I was uh, going to school, the same school for eight years. I was taking the same bus for eight years. At the same time, I was seeing the same faces, the same people. There was one guy working in, in one of the factories on the way. He literally started with five fingers on his left hand. Like year by year, he started losing them. Like obviously, he was losing his finger because of some uh, workplace uh, condition. He was going to the doctor. They can or cannot fix it, whatever. Then what? They go back. He goes back to the same illness generating, sickness, disease, injury generating working place, which then he uses. He loses uh, the other fingers. So you are overwhelmed. You are depressed. Uh, stressed chronically, uh, you, don't, you, you don't like your uh, job, you don't like your boss, you don't like your uh, co-workers, you go to a uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, for a while you're all right, then what? You go back to the same stress generating, illness, sickness uh, generating working place. Uh, so the doctors or the healthcare in uh, capitalist society does not necessarily solve the problem. You go back to uh, the same working place uh, at the end of the day. So in socialism, uh, those conditions uh, will be fixed. Uh, of course, this means uh, large-scale participation, participation of doctors, people, workers, everybody. Uh, elitism should be eliminated. Um, and medicine, instead of uh, being uh, regarded as a hard science, uh, should be a so so social science. Because at the end of the day, social factors uh, affect, <coughs> cause, uh, and aggravate uh, the illnesses. Um, so there should be multifactorial explanation instead of cough bacillus uh, causing tuberculosis or instead of too much force breaking your arm. Uh, the working conditions, the safety measures, the systemic uh, causes should be considered. Uh, it should be com comprehensible so that everybody understands, everybody knows what's going on feel like uh, the doctor know, knows better than you, so he's going to um, suck your money out of your pocket. And it should be an end. Instead of a like, means to uh, create more and more surplus value, uh, everybody, every citizen under socialism should be healthy regardless, uh, even if they are not creating surplus value, and they won't be. Uh, free magic medical education is a must. I mean, uh, medical education is free, then no class or income barriers uh, will exist. Uh, so that uh, in, in today's uh, structure, this, the bourgeoisie who can afford the expensive education and uh, the minorities uh, cannot. If education is free, then there will be no racism. Everybody uh, will find the same equal opportunity to uh, take that uh, education. Um, and healthcare at the end of the day uh, should be free. It's kind of trivial. Uh, health is a human right, not a commodity, bought and sold. I mean, when it comes to an iPhone or a Ferrari, it's easy. Like, in the market, there's supply and demand, and there's a market price. It's $500,000. It's efficient. This means that uh, with that price, the ones who don't have $500,000 won't be able to buy a Ferrari. So what? Uh, everybody doesn't uh, need to own a Ferrari. Okay, uh, but when it comes to health, like there is a supply of health, demand for health, and it's a market price. So market price for a broken leg is $60,000. But the same thing is true. If you don't have $60,000, you won't be able to fix your broken leg. But it's not that easy to say that, yeah, people, not everybody uh, needs to own a Ferrari, but you cannot say that not everybody needs to have a uh, normal leg. Uh, so it, it must be free, and it's, it must be a human right, not bought and sold as a commodity like this. Uh, and it should be accessible to everybody. everybody. Uh, for instance, in Russia, you know, Siberia, kind of northern, difficult to uh, go there. Um, transportation uh, opportunities 
Bizarre değil midir? Bastille, in Soviet Russia, those people in Siberia have the right to get the healthcare and other uh, goods and services, no matter what. Um, and they were getting it. But under capitalism, after 90s, because of lack of demand, it's a small community, like just a few uh, towns and villages. Uh, so it's not worth to open up a hospital there and sell uh, healthcare. Then those people lost more than 10 years in terms of life expectancy under capitalism in Siberia. Um, so under capitalism, anything, uh, of course, especially health and education, is not accessible to everybody. In the rural areas, uh, all the like art, uh, sciences, health, whatever, is limited. In that sense, medical practice also uh, will be transformed. Uh, instead of a mechanistic engineer, machine, doctor, patient uh, view, uh, the doctor-patient relationship should be socially defined. Uh, there shouldn't be any exploitative uh, relations uh, between the doctor and the patient. Um, preventative uh, care instead of illness generating system uh, will be favored, which is the case in Cuba. Uh, so at the end, uh, you don't need care because you already uh, prevented, which is more efficient, more cost uh, saving. Of course, under capitalism, you cannot get any of these uh, certain reasons. So revolution basically is the only way. Uh, it's not, I mean, revolution took place in uh, Soviet Russia, but this socialist medicine, the transformation of socialist medicine didn't take place. Of course, it's not, the, it's not an overnight thing. Uh, you cannot rewrite a theory uh, and understanding of uh, medicine uh, over, overnight, but even in longer years, uh, it, didn't, it, didn't, uh, it wasn't the case uh, even in uh, Soviet Russia. So, but again, uh, revolution is the uh, preliminary of uh, a socialist uh, medicine. I mean, various theories, mass organizing, the way, the way to get there, Vanguard Party, uh, rebellious movements. Last one is kind of uh, um, increasing and continuous reformist demands. I mean, the argument is that uh, you shouldn't be making reformist demands. Reformist demands will be reformist demands. So it's not gonna change the system. Uh, so demands should, should be revolutionary. But in this case, uh, increasing and continuous reformist demands uh, at some point, we force the system, we bring the system uh, to a point that uh, the system won't be able to uh, provide those demands. If we increasingly and continuously uh, make those demands, at one point, the system won't be able to uh, satisfy those demands. And then, the, if your demands are not satisfied, then the uh, nature of demands might be turning, will be uh, turning into a uh, revolutionary one. Uh, after the revolution, uh, both capitalist medicine and socialist medicine, uh, which is barely initiated, will uh, exist, coexist uh, for a while. Um, struggle will continue in, in Soviet Russia. Uh, the doctors, basically, as a separate uh, little uh, class, maybe, uh, not really, but won the struggle so that in Soviet Russia, the socialist medicine did not take place. Uh, but in Cuba, it did, uh, more or less, uh, if not the ideal one. Um, and that's about it. So thank you for uh, <laughs>
you know, you talked mostly about medicine, but actually that model could be used for education, right, for right. law. Yep. Uh, it could be for any of the anything that's within the capitalist Religion. system. You could use that same model and superimpose it, and you find those same pitfalls. Yep. And it's interesting because. When you talk to, uh, when I talk to black bourgeoisie, or especially black conservatives, then they swallow whole the capitalist model, and they'll say things like Clarence Thomas says, which is basically, you must pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, which is basically the same thing as saying, I've accepted the capitalist model, and I made it, then you should make it too. And, and so it's that, that whole blame game, which the capitalist system uh, co-ops almost anything if you let it. Uh, because you talked about how, uh, you, you gave a good illustration about how which sugar causes tuberculosis, bacillus causes uh, tuberculosis, but what are the, con the material conditions of the society that causes one group of, of society or one class of society to be more susceptible to that uh, uh, cog bacillus than say the other uh, capitalist right. system? I mean the other, uh, say the people at the top of the system. So I thought it was a really good presentation. Thank you. And I agree. Um, one thing that I thought could be mentioned more is the greatest which occurred under Mao, and especially under the Great Leap Forward, um, where you had life expectancy basically double, infant mortality rates more than halves, um, every single life expectancy returned. And it was interesting because you talked about the different character, uh, characterizations, uh, which the capitalists actually used to criticize Mao. Like, for example, you said no barrier to education, um, which, of course, was the down to the countryside movement, in which doctors weren't just, you know, encouraged or like rural doctors were encouraged to come to the city and learn more. Like urban doctors were actually sent to the countryside to teach medicine. Um, it was widespread medicine issue. Barefoot doctors is currently the leading model for preventative health in the developing world, including India. They don't like to admit it, but almost every developing country uses a barefoot model doctor in, in India, Africa, and Latin America to deliver health returns. Um, you know, it was it was literally a struggle class struggle and the continuing question of what sort of medicine you're trying to lab. So it was, it was just interesting that it fit. On yeah, I didn't do much uh, data. Uh, but yeah, I mean, China, in all of those uh, health indicators uh, was 460s, was behind India, which is kind of, the two are kind of comparable uh, countries. Um, so China was behind India, and China became turn out, turned into a socialist country, and India stayed to be a capitalist one. So it was a good comparison in uh, every terms, uh, those two countries, and China surpassed India in terms of education, in terms of life expectancy, infant mortality, nearly doubled, and within India, Kerala was following a Chinese model, kind of. Uh, so yeah, it's a very clear, uh, but it was kind of huge uh, this issue on that, so I am just going with that. But yeah, I mean, there's this very strong, very, very strong evidence of uh, socialist, social democratic uh, healthcare doing better uh, than the private world. Yeah. getting uh, uh, in return uh, 
what education is for. I mean, you taught uh, all these uh, from the uh, elementary school. Uh, and then, I mean, it's kind of, I feel like some people are in Stockholm syndrome in that case. I mean, he's unemployed. Uh, he doesn't have insurance. He's screwed by the system. But he still says that it's my fault. <laughs> I mean, how, how can you accept that? Like, so how can you still love capitalism, believe in it, and say that I was lazy, you know, I didn't go to school and stuff, so that's why I'm unemployed, so. And it's just because you don't have insurance. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's what they think. You just can't afford right, insurance. Right, right, exactly. Oh. So. <laughs> um, first you first you okay, you arrived. Um, you know, I thought it was a good presentation. Um, I thought in some ways it could have been supplemented, or maybe this could be another paper. Uh, I mean, we talk about some of these large uh, food corporations because uh, I read the Financial Times a lot, almost like every day. And not because I love it, but because I feel like it's one of the better ways to understand what capitalism is doing and keep your eye on them. And they talk a lot about the food shortages that we're having, but one of the major problems with these food shortages that's related to um, healthcare is also uh, these companies, uh, I forgot the name of it, but the one that has a logo of the supermarket of the world, like uh, ADM and some of these food companies and some of these, uh, people that uh, go into these companies and just basically make them buy our soybean oil or our whatever oil, uh, and they steal the indigenous seeds from the country, they pack them, and, and then all of a sudden you have this rise in various, uh, what we call Western diseases like diabetes, heart disease, cirrhosis of the liver, uh, blood in the arteries, I mean, uh, fat in the arteries. Uh, but basically, uh, these American capitalist food companies like ADM, and some of the others, and it's about five of them, it's about three of the uh, major ones. Uh, basically, whenever they go into, a, uh, say, a third world country, uh, these diseases actually, uh, the the, um, the rate of these diseases actually go up. And uh, I think that's kind of fascinating. All uh, oh, right, I mean, food and nutrition is the primary, uh, uh, has the primary effect on uh, people's health. Uh, and like Cuban people being healthy, it's not because that Production in the food production, since it is not the profit is not on, uh, it's not the motive. Uh, the, the government, while producing the food, uh, does not feel uh, it necessary to use uh, additives, chemicals, and stuff to decrease the uh, cost or to increase the uh, uh, or use hormones and stuff. So uh, the other sectors. The, uh, the structure of the other sectors also affect uh, your health. Uh, but in um, capitalism, uh, it's all about, I don't know what, we, what, what I eat, basically. Right. <laughs> right. Does anyone want to go to Beto's or something real quick? Yes. Because I got eggs.